Native American flute. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Reverend Kathy from Unity North Spiritual Center. It's a snowy day today in Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, anyway, we're glad you're here today. We are an inclusive community. We welcome and accept all people. So whoever you are, wherever you are on your journey of faith, you're welcome here and we're glad you're with us. So those, for those of you who don't know, we're part of a greater worldwide unity movement. We're the publishers of the Daily Word magazine, and we've been holding 131 years of prayer vigil through Silent Unity, the prayer ministry of the unity movement. So prayer is the heart and soul of unity. Our chaplain today is uh, Susan Marie. I'm not sure if she's here yet. Um, Oh, there you are. Okay. Uh, Susan Marie will, is available to pray after service. And um, you can let us know your phone number at some point in the service on chat. or um, And then um, if you stay after in social time at the beginning, you can hold your number up for us. And somebody can call you if they have a prayer need today. All right. So... Um, I want to thank um, Chris Taliano, who helps make this service possible as our IT person, and also uh, today's worship assistant, who's also our board president, Wanda. We're happy you're with us, Wanda. And, uh, and our special musician for the day is Bruce Min Min Ye Bell, and he sings. He plays guitar, he plays flute, he plays trumpet, and he writes songs, man of many talents. And uh, he's been performing for uh, various spiritual centers for years and has been a regular at, at Unity North. So let's welcome him back. Thank you. Great to Glad be you're here. with us today, Bruce. And he'll lead us in our opening song. I feel the spirit is the opening song. Uh, we're going to sing each verse double length according to what you see on the screen. Here we go. I feel the spirit moving in me. I feel the spirit moving in me. I feel the spirit. That was great. Thank you, Bruce. Good morning, everyone. So glad to see everyone here this morning. And if there is anyone new with us for the first time, if you could please raise your hand. Uh, we'd like to welcome you. And I'm trying to work my way through the screen here. I'm not seeing anyone waving at me. So welcome back, everyone. And just a first, a few things on Zoom etiquette. We have everyone muted to avoid any background noise um, or any echoes. Uh, right after the service, you're welcome to stay for social time and you can unmute yourself at that point. Um, on Zoom, there is a gallery view where you can see most everyone on the screen. Um, and there is an arrow on the, about halfway down on your screen, depending on your device, where you can page between the different pages to see everyone. Um, so the choice between that and the speaker view is totally up to you, whatever you prefer. And there's also the chat feature. 
Um, so if you want to ask a question, you can type it in there. Or if you are new, um, let us know your name and where you're from. And at this point in the service, we would usually do prayer requests um, in person. But since we are not together, we will do them within um, the privacy of our own homes. Um, encourage you to just speak aloud uh, any prayer requests that you may have for today. Um, we won't be able to hear you, but spirit will. And let's take a few minutes to do that now. Okay, let us pray. God, we give thanks, knowing that the prayer, knowing that you know the prayers of our hearts. We have faith in the outcome and give thanks in advance for these answered prayers. And so it is. Amen. Now, today's daily word, um, very appropriate for um, having a Zoom service, is connection. I honor my connection with all people. No matter how great the distance that exists between me and the people that I care about, I know that we are connected by our love for one another. Today, I reestablish and strengthen this connection by reaching out, even if it's only to let someone know that I'm thinking about them. Our connection is also kept strong through prayer. As I pray for those I care about, I bless them by holding my highest vision for their lives, seeing them as healthy, prosperous, prosperous, happy, and fulfilled. Whether we are in frequent contact or have fallen out of touch, any connection with my loved ones remains strong because we are one in God, one in love. And from 1 Corinthians 12, 13, for in the one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, we are all made to drink of one spirit. Today's word is connection. Now Bruce will lead us in the meditation song. In the silence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So I invite you to sit back and relax for meditation. Just allow yourself to take several breaths. As you begin to relax your mind and body. Unity has a five step process for entering the silence and I will take you through it today as we go into meditation. The first is relaxation. So we relax the body and mind. So right now just uncross your arms and legs. Find a comfortable position. Just take several deep breaths saying to yourself, I am completely and totally relaxed. And feel that wave of relaxation move from the top of your head down to your feet. And the second step is called meditation to begin to use affirmations to focus on God, on peace, on love. So just, I am now peaceful and serene. God and I are one. There is only God. Just feel the truth of these affirmations. I'm now peaceful and serene. God and I are one. There is only God. And the first step, third step is concentration. Focus your entire attention consciously on God with singleness of mind. This is a good place to use a mantra. This time, let's use the mantra, I am, which is the great creative word of God. As you silently keep repeating, I am, I am, I am to yourself. Let it take you into the fourth step, which is realization, the silence, which is God's part in the dialogue where we wait and listen. So just for a few minutes, silently say I am over and over. And as your thoughts continue, gently keep repeating the mantra. Even as you watch your thoughts after several minutes, Just speak, keep speaking the mantra silently. And then we'll have a few minutes of silence where we just wait and listen. Now the fifth and final step is thanksgiving. Giving thanks to God for answered prayer. This is a place to give thanks in advance for specific prayer requests.
Thank you, God, for all that we have received in these few moments of silence. We are grateful for your presence in our lives. We give thanks for the power of prayer and meditation to guide us and direct us in all that we do. Thank you for guiding, directing, and protecting our loved ones. Thank you for your healing love that moves through every cell of our bodies, renewing, restoring, and strengthening, strengthening us. Thank you for prosperity and abundance for ourselves, for our spiritual community. We are grateful for this loving, supportive community and for all of our blessings. Thank you, God, and so it is. Amen. And now Bruce will sing his first um, guest song. This song is from David Pomerantz. It's called It's in Every One of Us. I expect some of you know this one. So if you do, I hope you'll sing along. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the second line, I sing, find your heart, open your inner eyes. It's a little change. Thank you, Bruce. Haven't heard that song for a long time. Great song. Thanks. Well, during my ministerial training years ago, I was a tour guide at Unity Village, Missouri headquarters for the Unity Movement. And people would take the tour and often tell me their stories about how they came to, into Unity. And I remember one woman found unity by discovering, discovering a daily word at a garage sale. Another person I remember from Africa found the daily word in some packing material in a box that had been shipped to her. There were many stories of people being uh, told about unity by a friend and then finally going and staying only to have that friend completely disappear from their lives. That was the only reason the friend was there, perhaps, to bring them to unity. Often people find unity at a time of pain and transition. 
This was the case for me back in 1981. As a single parent, I had moved briefly to Austin, Texas with my young son, Chris, who was four. And I was in the middle of a grieving crisis. I had heard of unity for many years because I'd been involved in metaphysics from a young age, but I had never attended a service. And I called a unity minister. He canceled all of his appointments that afternoon and he helped me go through this grieving process. And then I attended his service for several months uh, while I lived there. And he lit a flame in me that never died. And that was the beginning of my involvement with unity. I love the fact that it was alternative, progressive Christianity, focusing more on the metaphysical and mystical aspects of life, and also very universal, embracing people of all faiths. I also identified with the unity symbol of the winged solar disk. Charles Fillmore, unity co-founder, adapted this from Egyptian symbology to represent illumination and divine protection. I, I believe it's perhaps been a magnet for the old Egyptian souls somehow. The title of the talk today is Unity, Dogma, Doctrine, or Dharma. The definition of dogma is a body of theological doctrines very strictly adhered to, said to be incontrovertibly true. And according to that definition, unity does not have dogma. The definition of doctrine is tenets or principles of a religion. So I would say, yes, unity definitely has doctrine. It has specific doctrines that we call unity or truth principles. In essence, they are very universal. And Dharma, I will get to in a little while. I want to give an overview today of some of the basics in unity. The follow-up recording of this lesson, which usually comes Monday sometime, is one for people who show up wanting to know more about unity. If you're a beginner, this will help to give you an understanding. And if you're a long time unity student, this will be a good review and can also help you explain it to others. One of the things I find is that unity attracts many mystics and intuitive types. And the problem with being intuitive is we know what we know, but we don't always know why we know it or how to explain it. So in explaining some of the basic unity principles, I'm merely scratching the surface. Unity is as simple as we might want it to be as a teaching of positive thinking, or it is as deep and mystical as we may want to go with it as a metaphysical philosophy. And that's what I love about unity. It's very open-ended in that respect, so one can grow and keep expanding within it. So Unity began 131 years ago, conceived in the mind of Myrtle Fillmore in Kansas City, Missouri, not because she set out to start a religious movement, but because she had a healing need. She had been diagnosed with tuberculosis, which she had suffered with all of her life because other family members had it as well. She was told that it was inherited. And at age 42, she was so ill, she was given only six months to live. She had a husband and two young children at the time. And so one night in desperation, she went to a lecture by a man named E.B. Weeks. And she heard him say, you are a child of God and therefore you do not inherit sickness. Now somehow these words pierced through the veil of false beliefs and she heard the truth of them as a revelation. And she began working with that phrase daily. I am a child of God and therefore I do not inherit sickness. And not only did she speak this affirmation daily, but she began to spend many hours in prayer and meditation, going into the silence, going into all the life centers of her body and talking to her organs and cells and speaking words of truth and life and health to them. She told her body it was a blessing. And within two years, she was pronounced totally healed. And then her husband, Charles Fillmore, followed suit. 
he was a more skeptical scientific type. And as people began coming to Myrtle for prayer and often received miraculous healings, he decided to try it out. So he began sitting in the silence every night just to see what would happen. Night after night at a specific time, he sat in silence. He said it was a very cold, calculated scientific experiment without any feeling behind it, but he kept at it. And pretty soon something started to happen. After a while, he began to enjoy it. And then his dreams became more vivid. And then he began to realize he was dreaming things before they actually occurred. He was having psychic prophetic dreams, knowing ahead what was coming. And then he began to hear an inner voice working through him. And he was healed also for he had experienced a skating accident as a child, which had injured his hip. And because he was improperly treated, one leg ended up withered and shorter than the other. And an infection set in that impaired his hearing and vision on one side of his body. So he began to work with these principles through meditation and prayer and his vision and hearing were restored. And he was able to throw his brace away and walk with a slight limp well into his nineties. Now these two people are not worshiped in unity, but honored for what they began a movement of healing and love and peace in the world that evolved through the power of prayer. They were influenced by the transcendentalists, particularly Emerson, and they were guided by the truth that transcends the barrier of religious differences. Charles Fillmore said, we have studied many isms, many cults, people from every religion under the sun claim that we either belong to them or have borrowed the best part of our teaching from them. We have borrowed the best from all religions. That is the reason we are called unity. He called it early on, he called it primitive Christianity because he said they were emphasizing the teachings of Jesus rather than the later interpretations of the church fathers. They focused on the idea that we are born in original blessing, blessed for billions of years by the universe before some church fathers got in there and created a concept of original sin. The Fillmore's often called it original sinlessness, the same as original blessing. Well, there are five principles that summarize some of the unity teachings. Certainly there are many others, but these five explain the basics. Unity Worldwide Ministries has created statements depicting these five, but I like to summarize them even further. The first we call one presence and power. There's only one presence and one power of the universe, God the good omnipotent. This is the first and basic premise of unity if anyone ever asks you. When I was in ministerial school, we had to go before this panel of ministers for testing. And they asked us some very difficult questions. And I remember they asked me, what is your favorite unity principle? So I said that there's only one presence and one power in the universe. And the interviewer playing devil's advocate said, well, how can that possibly be? I mean, just the other day, a child was murdered down the street. People are evil to one another all the time with wars and crime and abuse and so on. How can you say there's only one presence and one power and that power is good when there's so much evil in the world? Well, I can't tell you what I said in response, but it must have been the right answer because they did ordain me. <laughs> but what I would say now is we do not subscribe to an opposing force that we call Satan or the devil. We teach the devil is a collective of negative fear-based thought with no power of its own except the power that we give it. We see evil as within that part of us that continues to believe in separation and operate through fear. We teach that in the relative world, the realm of changing reality, there is evil. That this is the realm of the five senses and it is in this reality that we experience pain and illness, suffering and evil. But in the absolute realm of God mind, the unchanging eternal reality, there is no evil. There is one presence and one power. And that is what we aspire to. 
And in unity, we teach that as we hold to the truth of the absolute, we can change the relative world of appearance and make it a better, happier place. So there is one presence and one power, and that power is good. And what do we teach about that power, about God? In unity, we are panentheistic, not pantheistic, believing that God is out here in nature, but panentheistic. And that's saying that we are in God and God is in us, just like the wave is in the ocean and the ocean is in the wave. There was a little fish in the ocean who swam up to his mother one day and said, Mom, what's, what's this water I hear so much about? Laughing, she responded and said, You silly little fish, why it's around you and within you and it gives you life. Just swim to the top of the pond, stick your mouth out of the water for, for a while and you'll find out what water is. Another way to say it is, everyone became alarmed when they say, saw Mullah Nazrudin astride his horse charging through the streets of the village. Where are you off to, they asked. I'm searching for my horse, said Mullah as he whizzed by. Well, the Zen master of Rinzai was once seen searching for his body. It provided endless entertainment to his unenlightened disciples. One even comes across people who are seriously searching for God. Imagine that. Well, the second principle of unity, we call the divinity of humankind. A man named Smith was seated in a movie theater and he became aware the, the man in front of him had his arm around a rather large dog sitting next to him in the seat. He began to notice this dog was responding to the movie with great understanding. He would snarl and growl when the villains arrived. He would yelp happily at the funny parts. And finally, the man couldn't stand it any longer. He tapped the guy in front of him on the shoulder and he leaned forward and said, I just can't get over the behavior of your dog. And the guy turned around and said, you know, I can't get over it either. He just hated the book. When we find humor in this, why? It takes us by surprise because everyone knows, of course, dogs can't read, or at least we assume they can't. We also assume as humans, we cannot do certain things as well. Instead, we only use a small capacity of our brains, not to mention our innate spiritual potential. We believe in the divinity of humankind that we all have the Christ presence within us. And we distinguish between the Christ and Jesus. Jesus was the historical man who lived 2000 years ago. And Christ was the consciousness that he achieved. No different than Buddha consciousness or Krishna consciousness. It's a title of one who becomes enlightened. So Jesus said we can do what he did and even greater things. And we have this amazing Christ potential within us waiting to be expressed. So we teach there are no intermediaries. Reminds me of the Monty Python movie, The Life of Brian. Brian's this regular guy and everyone's following him around saying he's the Messiah. And they're crowding around him saying, oh, master, you're the Messiah. And he's saying, but I'm not the Messiah. And this continues as he's trying to get away. And then some woman says, well, anyone who's truly the Messiah will say they're not the Messiah. So he is the Messiah. So then he says, well, okay, okay, I am the Messiah then. And they all say, see, he is the Messiah. So no matter what he says, he cannot escape it. Well, if I took a poll right now of this group, we might find ourselves at different places on the spectrum in our feelings about Jesus. And that is one of the wonderful things about unity. You do not have to have specific beliefs about Jesus to be here and to learn and grow. Unity teaches Jesus is our way shower, showing us a way, a path to our enlightenment. If you have a healing need or a problem in your financial affairs, or in a relationship, or you have not yet found the relationship you're seeking, or perhaps you're struggling to find fulfilling work, or to cope with aging, or whatever it is, 
You might not be able to heal it, but the Christ presence working through you can and will if you call upon it. Charles Fillmore's favorite affirmation was, Christ in you, your hope of glory. Christ in you, your hope of glory. Now the third principle of unity we call law and grace. The law is the, the law of cause and effect or karma. We create through the power of the word and our thoughts and actions. So be careful what you think and what you say and do. I saw a picture with a quote. Two people are sitting at a table with a meal in front of them. And there's a sign that says Karma Cafe. There are no menus. You will get served what you deserve. A subtitle for that could be Life on Planet Earth. Well, the spiritual practice for the third principle of law and grace is creating good karma. That is done through kindness, good deeds, paying it forward, and positive thinking. This is the law of mind action. Thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. It is the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Or there's the children's version. They say, do unto others before they do it to you. <laughs> And then there's grace. Grace is God's love in action. And we do not always have to experience the worst results or effects of our thoughts, words, and actions. In that sense, grace saves us from what we have created and set into motion. We do not have to earn God's grace. It just is. There is nothing we can do to make God love us any more or any less than God loves us right now in this moment but we can learn to cooperate with grace more fully so the fourth principle is prayer and meditation we teach this is the most effective way we can cooperate with grace and commune directly with god prayer is the cornerstone of unity as i talk about it every sunday silent unity the prayer ministry of the unity movement has been holding prayer vigil for 131 years prayer is often referred to as going into the silence of meditation and listening to that still small voice within. We also teach affirmative prayer, speaking affirmations positively in the present tense. And the reason for that is we are not praying to some God out there trying to change him or her. We are trying to change our consciousness through prayer. And the fifth principle then is spiritual practice and action. This is putting the truth into action one day at a time, seven days a week. And here finally, we come to the idea of Dharma, dogma, doctrine, or Dharma. Dharma is a central notion of Buddhism, Eastern religion. It has many meanings and mainly it's considered cosmic law and is often associated with ethical rules. It includes a path of responsibility, righteousness, and discipline, a path of dharma. And unity does not impose dogma, but as we begin to work with the, the principles one day at a time, we move into a path of responsibility and discipline, a dharma way. It is a teaching of responsibility, the ability to respond and to take ownership for what we create. As we live principles, we automatically develop an individual code of ethics. We are called to action one day at a time, putting spiritual principles into practice, putting wings on our prayers. So in this fifth principle, we practice all of the others. We practice the first principle, one presence and one power, by practicing the presence of God or looking for the good, the blessing in all things. We practice the second principle, the divinity of humankind, by beholding the Christ. It means we look past the outer personality and see the divine presence in one another. We practice the third principle, law and grace, by co-creating a new life and a new world through positive thoughts, words, and also actions of loving kindness, good deeds, paying it forward. 
And as we awaken to grace, we experience the miracle of God's love. And we practice the fourth principle, prayer meditation, by spending time meditating and praying so we can commune with God. And the bottom line of all of it is love. Love is our goal, and it is the path upon which we walk. And that is the most important power that I find in unity. It is the kind of love you feel when you walk in the door of the church or in this virtual world, when you look around at other Zoom windows and you're greeted with a smile, or the kind of love you feel when you sing the peace song, or when you, you begin to work these principles and you send out thoughts of love and they come back to you and you know it, you feel it, you experience it. So unity, dogma, no. Doctrine and Dharma, yes. And most of all, love and transformation. In closing, Unity friend Emmett Fox said, There is no difficulty that enough love will not conquer. There is no disease that enough love will not heal. It makes no difference how deeply seated may be the trouble. It makes no difference how hopeless may be the outcome. A sufficient realization of love will dissolve it all. God bless you on your path in unity. Thank you. Thank you. I have a song for you. It's a, a song I wrote. There have been a couple of songs in my lifetime uh, called Let the Sun Shine In. And as a, a longtime unitic, I do like to let the sun shine in. But I wrote this song to you just as the in-breath calls for the out-breath. Uh, this is called Let the Sun Shine Out. I let the sun shine out. It's mine to give away. Spark of love come from the master flame. But in my times of fear and doubt, I get to think the light's gone out until I let love blow the clouds away again. I let the sun shine out, it's mine to give away. And I know I just can't lose, I've got more than I could ever use. night instead of day but when we wake up the sun still shines to me and you I let the sun shine out it's mine to give away and I know I just can't lose I've got more than I could ever use I let the sun shine out it's mine to give away Thank you. Good to share it with you. Thanks. Thank you, Bruce. That was wonderful. Yeah. All right. Uh, now is the time in our service when we um, would normally collect our offering if we were in person. But since we're virtual, we will um, bless it together. Um, I invite you to go to our website after the service and find the address where you can mail a check or click on the donate button or scan our QR code here. Um, any 
way that you want to do it um, to collect our uh, our tithes and offerings. Um, now I invite you to say the offering blessing with me. Divine love flowing through me now blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And I am grateful. We give thanks in advance for all of our offerings and abundant blessings. Amen. Now Bruce will do our offering song. Grateful to be giving. I am grateful to be giving. Community news. Um, as we all know, Sunday services are at, on Zoom at 1030. All times listed are Central Standard Time and more information about the events can be found at our website, uh, unitynorthmn.org. The shaman class with Carl is ongoing, uh, restoring the sacred renewal of light, life, and love. Um, and dates coming up are March 9th and 23rd 7 to 9 p.m. Central Time. And a new class coming up with Reverend Kathy, Bible Blade, wow, Bible Basics Unity Style. Um, they will be on Wednesdays, uh, the 17th and 24th at 6.30 to 8.30 Central Time. And you can register for that on our website as well. And then coming up is our Easter Journey, five-week Sunday lessons. Um, from next Sunday, March 7th, through Easter Sunday, April 4th. Our Sunday lessons will follow a path designed for greater self-awareness. This path is patterned after the significant events in the life of Jesus and the stages of mystical awakening. Next Sunday, baptism and awakening. Looking forward to it. Now, Kathy will lead us in the prayer protection. Okay, well, first, let's say thank you. Um, thanks to Chris for your ongoing help with every service. And to Wanda today, let's give them both a hand. And a special thank you to Bruce, our guest musician for today. We're glad you're with us, Bruce. Thank you so much for the Unity Songs today. It was great. Thank you. And now let's do our prayer for protection. Together, the light of God surrounds us. I am the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love of God. The power of God protects us. I am the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. And now we'll sing our peace song. Everybody sing wherever you are. If you want to.
Thank you. Thank you for joining us today, everyone. And be sure to stick around for social time. You will be asked if you want to unmute your screen. So go ahead and unmute and enjoy visiting with everyone. Have a great week, everyone. Bye.